Hi guys, Stuart from Solitech. I uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of uh, multi functionality. So I've got a little design here of a multi-piece plastic uh, key ring remote torch. So there's a little LED torch bit with some buttons on top and it's in three pieces, a base, a top and a little keypad. I'd like to create a mold tool for the top section. Okay, I've, uh, I've got that file open. Here it is, and you can see there's a little stud that comes through underneath um, and what you're seeing there basically is where the screws would attach to connect the two halves together. So I'd like to make a mold tool for this, so I'm going to work across the mold tool functionality, here they are here, and just run through a few things. First thing we're going to do is put some scale onto this part, I increase the size by about 2%, so that's 1.02, so that just scales the whole model up to allow for shrinkage in the plastic for um, this little design. So we'll add that, puts a feature in the tree. Next thing I want to know is where is the parting line for this for this little part. So um, I'm just going to um, turn the shadows off because I don't think we need those. So I want the line that runs around this part. Now the nice thing about the part line analysis is it uses some sort of datum. So I'm going to use the top plane as my datum. And then when you do a draft analysis it basically calculates for you everything that's got draft. You will do see that there's a yellow surface in here which actually requires some draft but um, I'm reasonably happy that that's just a vertical face. So I'll go OK to that and once again it generates a feature in the tree. This is the blue line that you can see running around that and that blue line represents the parting line for this for this object. I'm going to hide that for now. I don't really need to, um, to see that right now so I'm just going to hide it. Next thing I want to shut off surfaces because there are holes through this uh, the top part of this little keyring remote and um, those would need to be closed off so that's what the shut off surfaces do. So automatically that's picked up all these contact loops that run around there so it's found those for me and I'm just going to go OK to that and it will close that off. Now as part of that process we've actually got a couple of surface bodies that have been created. If I hide the solid you can see that there's two surface bodies there, um, a green one and if we look from the underside there's a red one. Now those surface bodies make the cavity space for the solid and they both intersect at the at the where the buttons were, so that's why you kind of get a, a mixture of red and green in the same space. If I hide one of those surface sets, you can see there's the surface that represents the inside of that plastic component. I'll turn the other one back on again. Having done that, we need a parting surface. So I'm going to go and click on parting surface. What that does is it straight away uses the parting line to determine where the um, parting surface is going to come from. Now if I increase the size of this, I'm just going to make it 5 millimeters, and we look down in this end where the LED would be, you can see that the surface is starting to get a bit messy and if I increase that even further um, we get a, a problem where the surface is kind of overlapping each other and intersecting each other and that relates to the um, parting surface coming normal to the parting line. So it comes off you know, normal to that, that uh, line that we got around, so it generates this intersection. But fortunately for us, we've got another option which is manual mode. And when I turn that on, you can see that the parting line comes straight out towards these out of boundary rectangle that it's put around the model. So I'm going to increase that a little bit, we'll make it up to about 30 millimeters just to give me a, myself a bit of space. You can see it's not a very big part. And uh, from that we'll just go OK and it generates this grey surface around there which makes the, that represents the, the splitting or the parting surface that runs around this object. Next thing in the list is the tool split. Now when I click on that it needs to sketch somewhere because we want the shape of the, of the, the tool that's going to go around it. So I'm just going to use a, a little, i use a corner re rectangle, I'll just use a centre corner rectangle object, just go from the origin. And the key thing here is I want to make sure that my, my box that I'm, that I'm building here um, doesn't exceed the parting surface, okay? So I'm just drawing within the boundaries of that grey surface. We'll go OK to that, and as soon as we go OK to the sketch, SolarWorks starts to build the tool block around that. So you can see it's extruded that, um, that sketch upwards and downwards to give me two halves of a tool with the parting surface in the centre. I'll just make that 25 millimetres in uh, both directions. So we get this little block, it's only a small block, but it's only a small part. So um, there it is going through the centre, and as soon as we go OK, we get the two halves of our tool split by the parting surface. So we can still see all of these surfaces at the moment, so I'm just going to hide those surface bodies for now. And there's our, there's our tool. Now, uh, admittedly at the moment it's a little bit hard to see sort of what's going on, so what I'll do is I'll just go to this this particular body and we'll change a little bit about that body so we can see a little bit through it so I'm going to make that transparent so we'll say I'll oh, transparent 
we'll make it a light blue transparent color and we'll go okay so now you can see through to the inside and you can see the the little um, surface that's there um, that represents these two parts and we could turn the the bottom ma and make that transparent as well but for now I'm just going to hide this this upper surface okay I don't want to see that for now and you can see on this inside we've got this sort of peg that comes through from where the LED would would be now I'm not too comfortable that that's a piece that just sits there so one of the last things we've got is to be able to create cores in our tool the other place you might create a core might be where these pins are so that might be created as a pin that presses up into the tool and just sits there so either way we could create a core for this or one for the pin so I think what I'll do is I'll make the, a core for one of these pins so you can see how that works so I'd like a core now it needs a surface so I'm going to go to that the little um, surface on that on that pin and what I want to use is I just want to use the geometry of the base of that so I'm going to convert that edge so that's going to be what I need to make my little pin that comes out of here or the core that comes out of this tool I'll spin it around a little bit and so when we exit the sketch um, once again we start to get the ability to drag that surface sort of out of the model now at the moment it's going blind up and blind down but I want a bit of draft angle on this so that it comes out a little bit bigger down the bottom so we've got a little bit of draft so you can see where it's going to remove that and we could just say instead of blind going down the other way we could just say through all and it goes all the way as soon as we go OK to that it splits that portion off so now we actually have another separate little core sitting underneath there which represents that pin okay so that's pretty much covered all the all the tools let's just uh, see the rest of the solid solid bodies that are there so if I make the tooling split visible and make the, the top half visible what we'll do is we'll color the bottom uh, block so it looks a little bit different so you can see that a little bit easier so I'll just give that a, a different color let's just make that um, a dark blue as well Go okay so it's a little bit transparent but that's allowing us to see that pin through the center and now let's just go to our regular features and what I'd like to do is I'd like to make an exploded view of this part file so this is a multi-body part file we've got so we'll create an exploded view I want to grab this this portion of the tool and drag that up out the way then I want to grab the, the portion of the uh, component itself so that was the, the thing we used to to make the shape of the whole thing so we'll just pull that up out the way and then the last thing I want is actually that that little pin that's in the inside so we'll grab that and we'll just drag that down a little bit out the way of this whole thing okay so there's our different um, components that we've got um, that we've created into an exploded view so we've got the top half of the tool, bottom half of the tool with a little core, and there's the original model. So you can see that creating tools with the SOLIDWORKS multi-tool functionality can be pretty quick. Um, and uh, there obviously is a little bit more complexity when you get into more uh, complex tools. You'll have to change your parting lines. But in general, um, it's very successful functionality and does a great job. Thanks, and I hope that's uh, useful for you.